I hate how confusing it is picking out a HELOC lender. You would think by now it would be easy, but there's like a million different lenders, all with different terms and requirements and fine print that you need to be aware of. So how do you know which HELOC lender is best for you and your situation? Well, I've looked at almost all of them and I'm here to share with you what you need to know when picking out a HELOC lender in 2024 and what you need to be aware of when doing so. And I'll also share with you at the end the number one HELOC lender that I promise you is going to be the best for all of us. Let's get to it. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you didn't already know, my name's Jay Costa. I'm a real estate investor, agent, builder, yada, yada, here in Northern New Jersey. And if you get value out of this video after watching, make sure you get value out of it first before. But if you do, smash that like button down below as always, and consider subscribing because we are slowly building a tight-knit community here of like-minded individuals looking to build wealth in real estate, specifically using a HELOC. And I know I get a lot of comments and questions from you guys, both through my website, realjcosta.com, as well as down in the comment section, it is crazy down there, asking me what the best HELOC lender is here in 2024. So that's what we're gonna go over today, how to pick out a HELOC lender and what you need to know and be aware of when picking that lender here in 2024. So first, of course, let's go over what a HELOC is. If you didn't already know, a HELOC stands for a home equity line of credit. And what that is, is it's basically a revolving credit line based on the equity or a portion of the equity that you have in your home. So unlike conventional mortgages, HELOC lenders are not bound by very, very strict guidelines and regulations by the government. So each HELOC lender is going to be fairly different in regards to the rates, the terms, and the fine print that they have and they offer. That's why it's very important to know and to realize everything about the rates and the terms and the fine print that you're signing up for because they're not all the same. They're going to be very different. And that brings us to the main point of this video here, how to pick out a HELOC lender. So there are obviously many factors when choosing a HELOC lender or just a lender in general, but there's four main ones that I want to focus on in this video. Number one is the interest rate margin. Number two is the LTV, which stands for loan to value. Number three is the appraised value of your property. And number four is all of the closing costs and the fees. So first, we're gonna get started with the interest rate and the interest rate margin. Let's get into that. Each HELOC lender is going to base their interest rate on the same thing, and that is prime rate. And that's set by the Federal Reserve and Jerome Powell. And as of right now, in January of 2024, the uh, prime rate right now is 8.5%. Now, they don't charge you 8.5%. They actually charge you eight and a half percent prime rate plus a certain spread or a margin. This is what I called the interest rate margin. Now, this margin is going to vary greatly depending on your situation, your credit, your income, how much equity you're trying to pull out. Generally speaking, the more income you have or the uh, better credit score that you have, basically the less risky that the lender sees you as a borrower, the better margin or spread that they're going to offer to you. Let's say that the lender offers you a a prime rate plus one and a half percent. So if you take eight and a half plus one and a half, that means that they will be charging you 10% interest rate on this uh, HELOC balance that you owe. And that's probably about normal. Obviously, it's gonna depend, like I said, on your credit and things, but it's gonna vary anywhere from 1% up to 2% or maybe more if you don't have good credit. Obviously, the lower margin that they offer, the better. So make sure you shop around to, I would say, at least three different lenders to see what they're offering to someone in your situation. And don't be afraid to have, if they need to pull your credit to see your credit score, don't be afraid to do that. I'm in real estate, I deal with this all the time. I don't get why people are so afraid to have their credit pulled, it drops your credit score by like five points one time and all of the lenders see it. They understand that you're going and shopping around. They don't hold it against you anyway and it's temporary. It lasts for like a month. So don't be afraid to go have three different lenders pull your credit and it'll end up saving you a lot more in the long run. So next is loan to value or LTV for short. The loan amount divided by the value or the appraised value of your property. This is a very commonly used term in the mortgage industry and each lender is going to offer a different LTV. But General rule of thumb, I would say the average is about 75 to 80% LTV in this market right now. But you can find lenders up to 90 or even 95% but you may be paying for it in the interest rate margin. The higher the LTV, the more risky that the lender may see this HELOC and they may get you a little bit higher on that interest rate margin. So this is when like your actual situation and what you plan on using your HELOC for is going to come into play. If you don't need the maximum amount of equity 
out of your home, don't be afraid to take that lower LTV and save on the interest rate. And also you should be aware that just because a lender maybe offers up to 90% LTV, you can maybe ask them, say, hey, I only want like 70% of it, 50% of it, whatever your number is. Can you bring that interest rate margin or spread down? And I bet that they will. Most of the time they do. So generally speaking, you should apply for the highest LTV that you can get with the best terms and the best interest rate that you're looking for that you're comfortable with based on what you're planning on using the HELOC for. Now, the third factor when choosing a HELOC lender, like I said, is the appraised value of your home. This is a very important part of the HELOC application process, so pay attention. When you go to apply for a HELOC, chances are, most of the time, the HELOC lender actually pays out out of their pocket for the appraisal of your home. So like I said originally, go apply to like three different lenders, okay? And have them all send out appraisers for appraisals of the property. Now you're gonna find that some of them, some of the lenders send out an appraiser only to do an exterior appraisal, meaning they don't go inside the home. They do that in order to save costs, obviously, since they're paying out of pocket for the appraisal and there's no guarantee you're gonna go with them. So when you apply to those three different lenders, have them come out for appraisals on all three and see who brings you the highest appraised value. There's no harm in doing this other than a small drop, very small drop, like I said, in your credit score, and you'll be able to base your HELOC available credit on the highest possible value at that time. Just make sure that you're not paying anything out of pocket before signing up for this, obviously. You don't wanna be stuck with a $600 bill for an appraisal. Just using me as an example here, when I applied for my original HELOC, probably about three or so years ago now, I applied to three different lenders. Two of them did full appraisals, one only did an exterior appraisal, and basically the difference, like they all came in at way different values because Obviously, especially during that time, three years ago, the market was moving very quickly and not all appraisals are equal. So each one came in at a very different value and the difference between the lowest one and the highest one was like 80 grand. And that made a huge difference in regards to me deciding which lender to go with. Lastly, let's go over fees and closing costs when you're picking out a HELOC lender. So even though HELOCs are already known for like their low closing costs and their low fees, you still need to be aware of what exactly or precisely you you'll be paying for out of pocket both at the time of closing as well as during the draw period and during the repayment period of your loan and your HELOC. Like I said earlier, unlike a conventional standard mortgage, not every lender is going to be exactly the same. They're all gonna have much different rates and terms and fees and things like that. So ask as many questions as possible to each lender that you're applying for, both in regards to what you're going to pay or what you're going to be uh, paying out of pocket in order to close, as well as what you're going to be required to pay during the time that the line of credit is open. Some HELOC lenders I know have like a, you know, a very quick $100 application fee and that's it. Others have a $100 or so annual fee they have to pay no matter what. Others have, you know, small five or $10 a month uh, monthly fees that you have to pay. So like I said, each lender is going to be different. Just make sure you ask them as many qu questions as possible and make sure you dot your I's and cross your T's. So here's a quick tip for you guys. When you're applying to these HELOC lenders, make sure you're aware of all the promotions and uh, waived fees and reduced fees that they're offering. Many lenders offer a very, very low, like below market level introductory uh, interest rate in order to get you started for the first year or so. Other lenders waive uh, annual fees or monthly fees if you hold a certain balance or if you open up different accounts with them like different checking accounts or savings accounts and some even offer a lower interest rate margin if you open up different uh, checking or savings accounts with them as well. And to all my W2 friends out there, they also love you setting up a direct deposit right into an account, a checking account. So see if you sign up for a direct deposit with them, if they can offer you any sort of a promotion or waived fee or lower interest rate margin. As I keep saying, each lender is gonna be different, but it's very important to get every advantage that you can, especially in this higher interest rate environment that we're finding ourselves in right now. So we've gone over all the facts are the main factors that you need to be aware of when picking a HELOC lender here in 2024, but I told you there was one lender that you needed to be aware of that's going to be most likely the best lender for all of us. And which one is it? Well, the answer is your lender, your area lender. Let me explain. After all of my research into HELOC lenders, I have come to the conclusion that the best HELOC lenders for almost all of us in almost every situation 
is your local or regional credit union or bank. I'm not talking about a Bank of America or a US bank or anything like that. Do yourself a favor. Simply go on your computer, Google search for HELOC Credit Union and your area. Be like super, super local. Get super specific, like your town, your neighborhood, whatever. I guarantee you're going to find a couple different credit unions within a, you know, a, a reasonable driving distance from you, and they're going to be able to offer you the best rates, the best terms, and sometimes the best customer service, but sometimes not. That could be a little tricky, especially with credit unions. These local credit unions, in my research, offer the best possible HELOC terms that you can find. Reach out to these local credit unions first before reaching out to these big national banks like a Bank of America or something like that. I promise you they'll be able to offer you better terms on your HELOC than the national banks. And the reason for this is simple. Real estate in general is a very local-based market. They're gonna be very familiar with your area and with your specific property. So even though they're obviously much, much smaller than national banks, big banks, they are able to compete because they're very local and familiar with your neighborhood. And since they're familiar with your neighborhood, they'll be able to lend more aggressively because they know the market better than a big bank. And if God forbid they somehow have to foreclose and take ownership of the property, they're more comfortable doing so. A good analogy for this would be comparing like a McDonald's to your local burger joint. Yes, McDonald's has its place, of course, right? But they're never going to compare to that local burger joint that you grew up going to that makes your burger exactly how you want it. If you are looking into applying for a HELOC or if you already have a HELOC and want to know what to use it for in order to build wealth, definitely check out my custom playlist. I'll put a link up here as well as in the description box down below. Check that out. It goes through everything, how to apply for a HELOC, what to use your HELOC for, what not to use it for, and how you can use it in order to build wealth, specifically in real estate, but in other things as well here in 2024. That's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, drop a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think. How was your experience applying for a HELOC? If you've done it already, what do you think about my four main factors in order to keep in mind when applying for a HELOC? Or if you haven't applied yet, if you have any questions, once again, drop a comment in the comment section down below. We'll love to help in any way that I can, and I will see you next time.